Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Now today what I'm going to bring you is a Bradford City versus Colchester United match preview. After six months the match previews have finally returned. Obviously I do a match preview from every Bradford City game before uh, every league match. So just before we get into today's video if you could drop a like on it that would be massively appreciated. We'll set a high tag on today's video. Let's go for 60 likes on today's video. I know you guys can do it so make sure you drop a like get this video to 60 likes, that would be massively appreciated. It's a big target, it's a big ask, but I know you guys can do it. I know you're capable of doing it, so if you could smash 60 likes, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We did hit 4,100 subscribers yesterday, so I just want to say thank you all so much for that. I appreciate the support a lot. This past couple, of, this past week or so, the support has been absolutely class. If you haven't already checked out my previous couple of videos, I've been uploading quite a lot recently, so you might have missed some of the content on the channel, so make sure you go check them out. It's like predictions, ranking kits, all that sort of stuff. So go go check them out as well. That that would be massively appreciated. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and let's get on to the first match preview of the 2020-21 season. The Bantams return to competitive action at the Utility Energy Stadium for the first time in over six months tomorrow with a 3pm visit of Colchester United. Stuart McCall's side have made a strong start to the 2020 21 season in a cup competition beating Bolton Wanderers 2-1 to advance to the second round of the Carabao Cup before picking up a point in the Northern Group F of the EFL Trophy with a 0-0 draw at a strong Skybet League 1 Doncaster Rovers side. They played pretty much their first team, yeah, they had players like Ben Whiteman in there. We literally played our whole second team and to keep a clean sheet against that, you've got to take it, you've got to take the positives about that. Colchester United achieved a playoff finish in the Skybet League 2 last season, losing to a beaten finalist Exeter City at the semi-final stage. In terms of team news, Stuart McCall has near a full squad to choose from, with only Connor Shanks missing out for injury after picking up a knock against Doncaster Rovers, but uh, Stuart McCall said that will only be a couple of days, so he should be fit for the next game, which will be Lincoln on Tuesday, I believe. Zelly Ishmael will return to the fold after re returning a negative COVID-19 test on Tuesday evening. Obviously, he did miss out on Tuesday because he fell ill. Obviously, Ishmael's always bloody injured. Uh, Levi Sutton remains unavailable for selection due to a suspension carrying over from the 2019-20 season with the midfielder due to return for the Bantams against Stevenage on Saturday, September 26th. So it's, not, it's, it's going to be a while before we see Levi Sutton in the Bradford City shirt. Well, in terms of what Stuart McCall has been saying then, he said we have done our research on Colchester and we know what to expect. I watched their game against Reading last week in the Carabao Cup and they performed really well despite their defeat. They have three fast attacking players up front and I have seen enough of them to know who their main threats are. They will be coming to try and win the game, we've just got to focus on ourselves. In terms of last season, we only played them once before the season cut off. We played them in the middle of January, but we were meant to play them on a Saturday, I think in November, but they, their game got called off because they had the international corps, I believe. So we rearranged the game, it got played on like a Tuesday night in January. Owen Doyle played that match. It was god awful, that was the only league match I think I missed last season of all the games that we could go to. Um, we ended up drawing 0 0, it wasn't great. I don't think we had a shot on target. I think Chris Taylor hit the bar and that was the nearest we came. We looked very, very poor that day, but. We didn't get the win that day. Hopefully we can get the win tomorrow. In terms of a score prediction, I'm gonna go with I think it'll be 1-1 or 2-1 to Bradford, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go confident after last week. I'm confident going into it. A lot more confident than I was at the start of the season. I'm gonna go with a 2-1 Bradford City win. I think the goal scorers for me, I think Lee Button Lee Novak's gonna get another goal. And I think Elliot Watt's gonna get his first goal for Bradford City tomorrow. I think he'll score from maybe a free kick or you know someone's gonna fall to him on the edge of the box, he's gonna hammer it, it's gonna go in the back of the net. In terms of a goal scorer at four Colchester United, I'm gonna go with Poku. I'm a big, big fan of him. I think he's a very, very good player and I think he will get the goal for Colchester. In terms of my match day team then, I would go with the 3-5-2 system. It seems to be working very, very well for us at the moment. In goal, I would go with O'Donnell. I think he's secured that number one spot. Hornby put in a, a decent performance on Tuesday though. So uh, there's definitely competition for that number one spot, but I think at this stage it is still O'Donnell's and obviously he's the club captain, so to be dropping your club captain, the, the people that are coming in for him have to be very, very good and I can't see Horn be coming in for O'Donnell anytime soon in the league matches. In terms of right wing back, I would give it to Tyler French again. Obviously he came into the club as a centre back. I think he only played one game at centre back for us against Liverpool last year, but he was fantastic last week against Bolton. He obviously got the assist for the first goal, he was fantastic last week. I think he deserves a start tomorrow. So I would go with Tyler French at right back. In terms of the three defenders, I thought I thought Richard Everton had a really good game on Tuesday. I thought he had a really, really good game. Would you bring him back in for Staunton? Would you bring him back in for Anthony O'Connor for Paldy? I don't think you can drop Paldy. I thought Paldy was brilliant against Bolton. He seemed to win everything in the air, as he always does. I, I'm a big, big fan of Paldy. So I played Paldy in the middle. I would then... I think you've got to go Anthony O'Connor on the right. 
as the right centre back. I know obviously he did make that mistake to concede their goal, but the ball that he put in for Pritchard's goal against Bolton, it, it was a fantastic cross into the box. So I think I'll give Anthony O'Connor the nod as well. And but left centre back, it, it's up in the air. It's up in the air. Do you give it to Reece Staunton and Young Lad coming through? Um, it was kind of his fault for the goal as well on Saturday. Ben Richards Everton had a great game on Tuesday. I think I'd give Richards Everton the nod. I think Richards Everton played. He played really well on Tuesday, so I think I would give it to Richards Everton. But it wouldn't surprise me to see Reece Staunton in there. In terms of left wing back, I only really think there's one player at the club who can play that role, and that's Connor Wood. Fantastic defensively, got a great crossing ability as well. I think there's no one. That's ever even close to Connor Wood. Obviously, I know people like Pritchard, Longridge can cover for him, but I think Connor Wood is miles ahead of them, so I would go with Connor Wood in a left wing back position. In terms of the two central midfielders, I think, well, I mean, we only really have two central midfielders who are up to standard, in my opinion. I mean, I know we've obviously got some young lads coming through. I thought, you know, Keen Scales, Connor Shanks, they had a decent game on Tuesday, but I think it's got to be Elliot Watt and Callum Cook for me. They both played very, very well last week. I mean, Elliot Watt's ball through to Tyler French before we scored. It's a great ball, it's a great ball. I'm a big, big fan of them two in the midfield and I think them two deserve the nod as well. In terms of that number 10 position, Harry Pritchard, I don't really think he got that involved on Tuesday. I know he played more of a centre mid than a cam. Billy Clark, he had a decent game last week. I thought he was unlucky not to score. I think I'd give the nod back to Billy Clark. I think he deserves another start, see what he can do. But if he's you know tired after 60, 70 minutes, you can always bring uh, Harry Pritchard, that sort of player, onto the pitch. And he can pop up with the goal, as he proved last week. He can get a goal. He's got a goal in him. So I, I would definitely start Clark, but it wouldn't surprise me to see Pritchard in there either. In terms of strikers, again, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Curtis guffrey has been... A different player in pre-season so far. Thought he was decent as well last week against Bolton. Um, and the other striker, I would go with Lee Novak. I don't think Donaldson did enough on Tuesday to warrant a start. So for me, I would give the nod to Lee Novak. Obviously, he did score as well last week, so you got to take that into account. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to drop someone after they've scored. So that would be the team for me. And then you can have players like Hornby, Staunton, Longridge, Pritchard, Donaldson, Molly Henry, Ishmael. You've got a lot of options to go on the bench as well. So as I said earlier, I think it is going to be a two-one home win to Brad. I think Lee Novak and Elliot Watt will score for Bradford and I think Poku will score for Colchester. Make sure to let me know your score predictions down in the comments below and I will try and remember to include any correct score predictions in tomorrow's vlog. So make sure you hit the channel notifications on so you don't miss that. You're probably watching this now when I'm either on the bus to the gaff game playing the gaff game or I'm coming home and I'm editing the gaff game so that'll be out Sunday as well make sure to stay tuned for that but thank you all so much for the support once again recently make sure you leave a like 60 likes as I said at the start of the video will be absolutely class if you could hit that I would be massively appreciated if not it was worth it was worth it was worth setting a high target you know there's always a challenge always a challenge subscribe if you are new and I'll see you all guys very soon for another video peace uh -huh.